Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I'll be doing the second more detailed uh, video about my level design process. In the first one we went from Photoshop sketches and 3D sketching as you can see in the far area here to this sort of uh, early design of one of the maps. Now after this I shut down the recording and I made another few of these which I'm going to show you here. Um, I think... no, it's not that one. It's the composite one. So this is the next stage. Um, never mind the orange areas for now. But as you can see here, I've actually done five or at least four and a half versions of different maps. The uh, This one is the one I showed in the last video. So I'm not going to talk much about this. Uh, the next one I'm using the same sort of central piece as I did in that one, as well as the sort of jumping down here. But I have a bit of another layout in the corners, like this one is fairly open. Then you have this one. No, this is probably the one I showed. Uh, yeah, that's the one I showed, sorry. Um, so here is another one. It has these uh, pillars. It has a more open southeast corner, or what you want to call it. Then you have the upper part and a route through here to a fairly large area with the same, like the stairs is in the same corner as in the, the first one. So that is another design. That's the original one. Then I have this one. It looks uh, very similar to the last one, but instead of having the the wide open spaces around it, there's a fairly big drop down in the middle instead. So you can jump from the top level to the second or first level as you wish. And there's also really big pillars. There's a route around here. Then in this corner what we have is Again, sort of three level rooms with really wide ramps and just one a route leading into the middle here. Then what we have is, um, again, a fairly similar design to the last one with a jump from the third level to the first one in the middle. Um, there's ramps going through. Obviously I'm not going to show you the entire layouts because it's not going to make much sense either way. But once I have these five different areas, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about this one as well. Um, in this case, I did sort of a half finished level because if you're doing these quick, really just prototype maps, you don't want to put too much work into it. Uh, like if you have a design like this one, which I really wasn't happy with, it's kind of faster to just throw it away and start on a new one because. I've put less than a day, maybe even just half a day into each of these designs. So if you have one that it's going to take four days to get anything useful out of, it's better to just throw it away, make four new ones. Um, so you have to be sort of clever with your usage of time as well. Because as you can see here, it's really complicated. Uh, in some areas, in some areas, I just have big flat areas um, like this one and this. I'm not really happy with it. I wanted to have like an upper level on these four pillars, but I just couldn't get it to work, so I just skipped doing anything with these. Whoops, sorry, I broke the light because I moved something. Um, but yeah, once you're finished with these, um, just go in with another texture. I'm using the orange dev texture, which I showed in the Kismet video I uploaded as well. So I'm just going in with the orange pieces or in the orange dev texture and uh, basically pointing out the parts that I'm really happy with in that specific map. So it's the parts that I want to take with me when I'm doing the composite. Uh, because after I've done a few of these maps, uh, instead of building with really tiny Lego blocks, what I'm doing instead is building with room layouts that are on a uh, higher level or more advanced. 
So I I got this room in this map as well as the stairs in the corner here, which came out pretty good. So again, I it's I put the or I took the same corner out of this one, but instead I have uh, the route going through and then the stairs in the corner here. Um, then I have the um, the I don't know what to call it. Like it's really hard to talk about design because I don't have words for specific layouts and stuff like that. But it's just like a sort of lower area that leads to an upper platform where you have more vision and then lower area again with a door. And then you have the sort of three level uh, layout here. So those are the areas that I want to take with me when I'm doing the next stage of my design, which is the uh, the merge, which was the last file I opened. Don't save. Uh, so here what we have is actually the merge. If you look fairly closely you can see the um, the parts that I took out. So you have the upper part here, but instead of the sort of pillars in the corner here. I just have a flat area with a sort of bendy thing. Um, then I have the... Uh, I'm just going to go over and show you. The stairs over here didn't come out the way it did. Um, then you have the sort of pillar area that you can run around. You have doors leading into the center. Yeah, this uh, layout isn't really finished. I have another version which I'm going to show you shortly. But this is just what I ended up with when I uh, I removed all the orange and I just took it into a, an entire new map, put it together, and this is what I came up with. So the next stage here is uh, going to the... Nope, not that one. Opening this file here. So as you can see here, I've inserted a few player models to get a better sense of scale. I have a few lights uh, just to basically make it not super dark in these built-in areas. Like in the open areas I'm just letting a single dominant directional light take care of everything. But as soon as you start getting areas like these where they're completely built in you don't get much bounce light so you have to add lights of your own. But as you can see here I've added a few uh, weapon pickup points so if I open one of them, you can see this one is a shock rifle. Uh, this one down here in the middle is a rocket launcher. Um, I've added a few player spawns as well. Um, so the goal of this map, or this level of uh, working, or this stage of the development, I don't really, really know what to call it. So um, It's basically just to get from uh, from your really fast prototype levels to an actual level that you want to play test because you should actually be quite far along in your development before you start testing because otherwise the results aren't going to show you anything useful. So here I'm adding a few of these for scale. They don't collide with anything. I'm not even sure if they show up in the editor or in the game. Yeah, they do. Um, but yeah, these are just for scale, so you can playtest with them or you can just delete them uh, once you want to go into your first playtest. Uh, here I have a shock rifle as well. I have a link gun somewhere off in the corner. Yeah, there is one. Uh, there's also another one down here with the armories. Um, I'm not really happy with the layout as it is down here, and I broke the light again. Um, I'm considering just removing all of these pillars um, just to make it more open. You can move the weapon in something like this maybe and then just close off this area uh, because originally if you saw it in the last one I had this big block here was moved off to the side so you could actually jump down. Um, I'm not sure again these are the sort of things you want to check in your playtest. Like, do you want to? Uh, once you start fighting another guy and you see he's grabbing the weapon here, maybe you want to jump down instead. You pick up this weapon. Um, stuff like that. Like, alternate routes when you start fighting. Because I want most of the fighting to be around this area, as well as the 
bottom uh, where the rocket launcher is. Even though this is a wide open space, you can be attacked from so many different directions. It's up here, it doesn't show up very well because, I, again, I broke the lighting. But up here is route, here, here, the bottom, here as well. So being at the bottom here, it's a really scary place to be. And being at the top is a good place, but again, there is nothing up here to really wait for. So I'm trying to start balancing out the routes like I showed you in my... Um, I'm actually not sure what the video is called, but designing with advantages or something like that. So you want the different areas to be good in different ways. This is obviously a high ground advantage, and if you're standing somewhere like here, you can't really be attacked in, or someone can't really attack you from behind. Sure, in a few player map, it's less of a problem, but I still want it to be a problem. Um, and again, I have one route leading up to the third level here, one here, and one here. So I'm trying to design the uh, the top walls here. Again, they're not really showing up because I broke the map, but yeah. So I've done the layout of these top walls. They only really uh, cut down on the sight vision because I don't want a player to be able to stand in in the top uh, part of the map and be able to see every uh, every way up. Like you can stand in the middle here, but then you have to spin around a lot. Um, I've considered adding another set of stairs uh, in this area here because I'm not really using it for anything else. And I've considered also um, basically either closing down this uh, entirely or do something else with it. Uh, I'm just going to show you as well. Um, uh, here is the 3584 by 3584 um, brush that I used to set the size. So as you can see, the entire map is actually within the limits here. But at this point, you should basically just remove it and never care about the size limitations again. Because it's fulfilled its purpose at this point. Um, if you do uh, any changes or when you start doing changes, it should be because you have a really good reason for it. And you shouldn't go, oh, this part of the map here, it's so straight, I want to do something else with it, but I can't because I'm, I have a map size limit. Like, no. At this point, stop caring about that. You have the mostly finished layout, and if you start testing it and find out you want to do something, do it. Because at this point, the gameplay is the more important bit. The only reason why I used the brush to begin with was because uh, sometimes it's actually easier to create if you start with limits. Because if you start with, like, if you just start start UDK, you open a blank new map and you want to start working, it might actually be hard. So the in, uh, entire process that I'm showing you in these videos is to get from something to something else and constantly make it more complex until you actually have a map that you're pretty happy with. Um, so going from something to something else instead of just opening the blank map and having no limitations it might help it uh, or it might help you get things done. Um, so in this case um, I could basically just remove all of these skeletal mesh actors um, add a couple of health kits, maybe uh, maybe some other incentive to have it up here, like a couple of health kits in the corner here, or something like that, as well as add more ammo, and probably add a few more spawn points. I think I have six at the moment. So it's one here, two, oops, yeah, three, four, five, and I think it's one down here somewhere. Ah, okay, never mind. It's okay, sorry about that. I was recording to the wrong hard drive, so I suddenly ran out of space. But I will try to pick up where I was. And talking about spawn points, um, basically what you want in something like a three-player map is to have probably six or seven spawn points 
because you don't want to make it obvious where the other players have spawned and you also want to balance out the spawn points like the closest one to the middle rocket launcher here is probably a tie between the one in the top left and the one back here and it's fairly close for someone who spawns um, up top as well like you can get there quickly if you really want to but you want to make sure that the players have at least two different options to go from every single spawn point as well like you don't want to spawn someone down in the uh, the drop down here but it's fine if you do it if they spawn up top because then they can choose between just going straight along and jumping down um, in a map such as this one that has so many separate routes everywhere um, the spawn points aren't really that important because you can get to anywhere you want really quickly but once you get to the bigger maps uh, with more different weapons uh, you basically want to force the player to make interesting decisions between where to go next and what's more important like a good weapon or a set of armor for instance and in the case of this one uh, the armor and the weapon might be a bit too close to each other um, so I'm not really sure about this one down here um, but yeah being that it's, it forces players to go into a dead end it still could be an interesting decision I'm just not sure about where to put the weapon here or if I want to include it at all because the the armor might be powerful enough as it is um, but yeah once you get once you get to this point, uh, playtesting becomes the most important part. And again, I showed you in the last video how to get from nothing to something. And in this video, we went from something to what might actually be considered a playable map. Um, just add a bit more health and some ammo packs. And this map could basically be testable at this point and you want to get some really good feedback from your players on areas that you think are the problem areas like the the really straight side here as well as the uh, sort of uh, choke going up to the jump down here uh, originally this was just closed off and the only way to get the jump down was uh, up the ramp here um, but yeah this is what I consider a fairly finished although not polished map and once you get to this point start working on your um, on your thoughts for how you want to detail it and how you want to move on with the map because some things will be fairly f finished at this point so you can start working on them even though I wouldn't recommend going too heavily into detailing but you can choose like your color scheme and stuff like that so I hope you liked this video and thanks for watching